I like this story, and that's why um, that's why we're doing this interview. Scott Hearn, a while back, had his car damaged by a pothole. Um, and he took Waka Kotahi to, I think it was small claims, um, or he used the consumer. Oh, let's just find out from Scott what happened, because it's a great story. Scott, uh, welcome. Welcome to the platform. Morning. Lovely to have you with us. When Thank did you. this all start? And where? It was nine, yeah, this was around nine, ten months ago on a trip to Auckland, just um, just a little bit south of Cambridge. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's where the saga unrolled. Okay. What happened? Uh, in a line of about five or six vehicles. Um, it was pretty busy. The road was pretty busy and just slammed into a pothole. Um, there's, there was myself and three others in the car and everybody kind of exclaimed, oh, my God, that was a beauty. Um, you sort of something you've kind of become a little bit accustomed yep. to now, I guess, on our road. This is State Highway um, 1, right? It certainly was, yeah. Yep. Meant, meant to be the cream, of the, cream, the cream de la cream of our road, State <laughs> Highway 1. Was the one? Yep. What happened to the car? What was the result of hitting the pothole? I, I, okay, so over the next three weeks, um, I was pumping the tyre up and I thought, oh, there's something wrong here. Decided to have a look into it and there's a, a, a big, um, big puncture wound on the sidewall of my left front tyre. Yeah. So I contacted um, NZTA and said, look, you know, there's any chance of some bit of recompense, bit of compensation, your potholes damaged my, my near new vehicle. Okay, I want to stop really you there. It. I want to stop you there, Scott. Most people would have said, oh, that's dreadfully bad, like pay for their tyre or, I don't know, yeah. uh, gone to the tyre shop. Yeah. That in itself w w was an interesting reaction. Why did you do that? I looked at the options I had. There weren't terribly many. I guess one of them was to hold whoever was responsible for the pothole liable or go and claim insurance. And um, I just decided insurance wasn't the way forward to me and my way of thinking. Um, insurance is, you pay insurance if your house burns down, uh, then, you know, your insurance company will rebuild it. But um, in this case here, it's pretty obvious who, who the fault um, lied at the feet of NZTA. Um, they're responsible for the road, so I thought, oh, well, then they need to cough up and be responsible for the damage. So they were sweet with that. They just sent you a check in the mail, right? Absolutely not. No, <laughs> no. So that, that, that began quite a, a, a sort of a, a long period of um, emails going back and forth. I think I dealt with at least 10 different people by email. Yeah. Um, the first thing they tried on was um, they passed it on to their contractor, um, and their contractor refused. They said they never will and never have paid out compensation for damage to the state highways. So I went back to Waikato okay, and I said, well, you guys would clearly have known that before you um, sent me down that path. Um, and I said, my gripe isn't with your contractor, my gripe is with you. And with you passing the buck to the contractor under New Zealand law, that's actually a little bit illegal. Um, you're not allowed to do that. That's, that can be seen as contracting out of your obligations under Whoa. the Consumer Guarantee yeah. Act. Yeah. So, so I pressed them, and, yep. um, and I, I sort of hit them up, and I said, look, you know, uh, the car's not that old, and I'm disappointed, and I'd like a, a couple of new tyres, um, because I, I, I don't want odd-sized tyres yeah, yep. on the vehicle. That's, that's on, a very tread. smart thing. Yeah. So we, I asked them for that. Um, it's illegal to repair an alloy rim. You're not allowed um, under New Zealand law to weld any suspension, steering, or braking components. Yeah. So I said, so repairing my rim, if it's damaged, is out of the question. So I'll have a new rim, thanks. Yeah. Um, I'll have a tyre pressure gauge, which is inside the, uh, sorry, tyre pressure sensor, which is inside the rim. It's yeah. a very sensitive. Um, yeah, and that's tire. probably. Uh, okay, Scott, so that, without the mechanics, uh, the full mechanicals, Yep. So that's what you want. How much dough did you want out of them? Oh, it, was, it was around about um, $2,800. Okay, well, that's a guess. That's in the ballpark. Um, and where? how far did you have to go to get that money out of them? Well, there, there was a, a, a sort of a game of table tennis back with the Fords yeah. on, on our email, and um, I just got a little bit tired of waiting, so I, I a little bit, probably a little bit threatening. I didn't mean to be, but... I said, look, um, this needs to come to a, a, a resolve sooner yeah. than later. Um, I sort of said to them, I'll give you, um, to close of business this particular date, to yeah. have a, a resolve that's amicable to both yeah. parties. If not, yeah. I said, you'll leave me no option but to take this to the dispute tribunal. And um, so that time came and when nothing happened, so I, I opened the claim. And how long did the claim take for you to process and get through? 
that was about a month to six weeks or up before we sat in front of the adjudicator. Okay, uh, months to six weeks. I'm just interested. Once you decided to pull the trigger on that, four to six weeks, and how long did it take to resolve the case? Uh, we had three sittings, and each sitting um, there was around about four weeks in between each sitting. So another um, three months. Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. and what was the outcoming outcome of all uh, that? Yeah. Yeah, the outcome from the adjudicator, he was awesome and he was very attentive and he listened and yeah. and um, he he made the decision that he he would agree to my to my uh, to my claim, um, everything except for two tyres. So so I was really happy. I got two tyres, a rim, a tyre pressure sensor, labour, a wheel alignment. So I was delighted. Put, puts my car back to as good as new before the incident. So I was okay. Right. And so how much was that in money terms? Uh, $2,187.10. Well, okay. What about all your time? Did you hire a lawyer for this or did you do it all off your own bat? I've got a very good friend who's who's um, quite switched on to these sort of things. Him and I work together on it. So, no, we didn't hire a lawyer. And the thing being that um, the beauty of the um, dispute tribunal, you don't need to. You know, they, mm. they take care of all that for you, which is fantastic. Scott, and I wonder too, with this, have you set a precedent, mate? Have you opened the floodgates? I think if NZTA take on the chin the fact that their processes and systems are shockingly um, lacking, um, I would like to think that, yes, maybe I have. Um, I think that our roads are in a dismal state. They've clearly been underfunded for a very, very long time, and I think they need to be held accountable. You, you cannot take on a task of, of promising to uh, build and maintain roads um, and then not do it, okay. and then just when people's so, cars but get my damaged, it's understanding, not and correct me if I'm wrong, this wasn't a breach of promise issue. What were the grounds on which the adjudicator awarded this money to you? That there was a liability for the damage caused to your vehicle? Yeah, there, there was some, uh, a number of systems lacking. The NTA um, stated all the way through that they had some um, foolproof systems in place. Um, they had um, timesheets, they had ways of proving exactly when potholes occurred, where they are cold, uh, occurred, how long it took for contractors to repair them, what the repair was, all this sort of thing. So I pressed them for copies um, prior to going, before uh -huh. I pressed them for copies of all that, um, and they couldn't provide them. 